Today we talk about the importance of injections. Where, when, and is the timing need to be perfect? I'm Dr. Mark Amos, and this is Taco About Fertility Tuesday. Being a fertility patient is not easy. You're asked to learn something you have never done before, such as taking injections, and all doing this with the fear that you're going to mess something up. No one who goes through fertility has done this before. Matter of fact, none of you would even be at a fertility doctor if you didn't have to. Most of you don't want to. But you're pushed into this and you are made to learn things you didn't know before. And there is a fear of not getting pregnant. And it's a real fear and it should be. And so then you start to get the feeling that maybe you can mess it up. Today's episode is to talk about the injections And to help reduce those fears, help reduce the anxiety, and let you know that, one, it is very unlikely you will mess anything up, and two, if you do, it usually isn't going to cause a big issue. Now, when you're talking about IVF, you're talking about multiple medications, and you're usually talking about injections. Now, what's important to understand is there are a few types of injections. There are injections that cause the eggs to grow, which are called your gonadotropins. These hormones are usually going to be gonalef, folostim, and menopure. The next category of medication would be your antagonist or agonist medications. Agonist medications are going to be lupron or microdose lupron. Antagonist medications are going to be meds like cetratide or ganarelix. The difference between these two is Lupron is used to suppress your hormones by affecting the pituitary gland. Microdose Lupron does the same thing but starts with what's called a flare and for the first three days boosts your hormones naturally and then suppresses. Antagonists, on the other hand, block your brain's ability to release these hormones even though it's still making them, it's blocking them. The next category of medication would be the medications that make you ovulate. This will either be Ovidril or HCG, which comes in the brand names Novaril and Pregnil. The last category of medications would be other. That's going to be things like doctors who use heparin, Lovenox, growth hormone, and other medications that don't directly make the eggs grow, but help the environment. The reason it's important to break it up into categories is because each category has a different timing and being late can affect them differently. So for example, gonadotropins such as gonalaf and folostim and menopure don't directly make the eggs grow immediately, but usually do over the next day. And so having the dosage off by, let's say, a few hours is really not going to affect anything as long as you don't miss the dose. Even if you did miss a dose, you're talking about a small fraction of hormone in the big picture. So over a cycle, let's say you're doing 300 units of gonadotropins and you accidentally take half a shot or you take double the shot or forget to take the shot you're still talking about 10% or less of the total medication you're going to take and it's not going to have that big of an impact, especially when you're talking about when the impact happens. If something goes wrong in the very beginning and you take too little, that's when you're recruiting eggs, it might have a slightly bigger impact versus at the end when the eggs are already growing and you're just helping them mature, it probably won't have as much impact. But in the end, missing one dose 
is never going to have that large of an impact. But obviously, still try not to do that. Now, when you're talking about agonists and antagonists, now you're talking about preventing ovulation. And in this situation, these are a little bit more accurate with regards to timing. And if you miss it, you could ovulate. Therefore, these you do not want off by more than an hour because you could potentially ovulate. Unlike gonadotropins, it doesn't matter where you are in the cycle, missing this shot can be very detrimental because then you could ovulate. Now, when it comes to trigger shots, these do need to also be very accurate on the timing. So, for example, you really want this shot to be within 15 minutes plus or minus 15 minutes of the time the doctor recommended you take your trigger shot. And that's because the timing of the trigger shot allows the eggs to get to the point of ovulation before the retrieval. If you took the shot too early, you could potentially ovulate before they do the retrieval. If you take the shot too late, the eggs could be immature and they wouldn't know that you took the shot late. Always let your doctor know if you missed a shot, took too much or did something wrong, or you believe you did something wrong, because then they can make adjustments and potentially prevent any issues. So for the example of a trigger shot, if someone took the trigger shot an hour later, they may not change anything. But if they took the shot three hours later, they're going to move the retrieval by a few hours so it can be closer to the right time. The last category of medications were the other medications. Those medications really do not need to be exactly on time. Those can be off by several hours, kind of like the gonadotropins, because their goal is to give an environment such as growth hormone or Lovenox. Now, you don't want to miss the shots, but being off by even hours is not going to affect anything. So in summary, I see many women getting very nervous about needing to take their shot on time. I've literally gone into rooms to go do an ultrasound and they have all their stuff out there taken. They say, I have to take it exactly at eight o'clock. And I explain to them, no, no, you, you can take the shot after the appointment. It's perfectly fine. But I understand that because again, you have never been trained to do this. And so I understand that. But now you know, if we're talking about gonadotropins, you can be off by hours and be fine. That's going to be golden left, Ballastim, and Menopure. If you're talking about antagonists or agonists such as Lupron, Microdose Lupron, and Ganarelix and Cetratide, you really want to be within an hour of the time you were supposed to take the shot. Again, it doesn't need to be exactly on time, just within that hour. When you're talking about trigger shots, you really need to be within 15 minutes, plus or minus, of the time you're supposed to take the shot. And then the last would be others, which you can be off by several hours. Now, I didn't mention progesterone. Progesterone is one of those ones that needs to be within an hour of the time you're supposed to take it. So, example, if you're supposed to take it at 9 p.m., it's okay to take at 10 p.m. or 8 p.m. So now that we talked about timing and Now you should be less fearful that you don't have to hit the shot exactly within minutes. Let's talk a little bit about where do you put the medication and why do you put the medication in these spots? Most of the medications, when you talk about Lupron, Microdose Lupron, Golf, Folostim, Menopure, Ganarelex, Cetratide, and Growth Hormone are going to be in the subcutaneous tissue. The subcutaneous tissue is the tissue right under the skin, which is a fatty layer that has a vascular supply. And when you inject the medication into that, it will be absorbed over time. When doing the subcutaneous shot, you'll take the needle and place it at 90 degrees to the skin. And that's because the subcutaneous layer is not that deep. So you can go directly 90 degrees into it. There are many places you can give this shot. You can give it in the abdomen. You can give it in the upper arm. You can also give it in the legs. But in all situations, you're grabbing the skin 
and then giving an injection. So you are putting the injection to the subcutaneous tissue. It is not a muscle shot. I recommend using the stomach. Now that sounds scarier, but in reality, if you think about it, this is going to be an area with less nerve supply for touch. And if you think about when's the last time you went to go feel something with your stomach because you wanted to know what it felt like, probably never, because that's not an area really made for that. But the back of your arms and your legs do have more nerve sensors for touch. And so it could hurt a little bit more in those areas. But again, we're talking a small difference. Now, there are some doctors who will ask you to take Menopure in the muscle. And although there is not only evidence to not support this, even the manufacturer does not recommend this. However, there are some doctors who believe that some people will not get the needle deep enough, and so they get concerned and ask people to take it with a longer needle into the muscle. Now, I'm never going to tell you not to do something your doctor recommends, but I do think you have the right to know that not only is it not supported, but even studies have shown it does not benefit you over going to the subcutaneous tissue. Keep in mind, this is only with regards to meds that are supposed to be subcutaneous. Meds that are supposed to be in the muscle still need to be in the muscle. The two common medications that are given in the muscle are going to be progesterone and oil and HCG trigger shots. Usually when we're talking about a muscle shot, we're going to recommend doing in the gluteus, which is the buttocks. Now, you'll think, well, wait a second. I see people always doing muscle shots in my deltoid. Why can't we do it there? The main reason behind this is because the amount of oil you are taking is a large amount. And the deltoid is usually not that big of a muscle in women. And so you could be putting too much fluid in that area. And so with the buttocks, there is more area that we can work with. And that's the reason why we recommend it there. If you're taking a very small dose or a single dose, you can technically do it in the deltoid, which is the round the shoulder area. But we do prefer in the buttocks. One common thing people will notice is that when they take the men such as Golmoth and Falstim, there is no stinging and it goes very smoothly. Yet when they try meds like Menopur or meds like Cetratide or Ganarelix, they'll get some irritation and sometimes even some inflammation. Now, you don't need to be worried about that because that is normal. But the question is why? What's so different about these medications? And it really comes down to a couple things. With the Menopur, it's impurities. Menopur comes from menopausal women. It's not as pure as Golmoleth and Folistim. Ganarelix and Cetratide have characteristics that irritate the skin and that can cause some discomfort. But as long as it doesn't become severely red or you develop fevers, it is likely normal and I would just recommend you let your nurse or doctor know. In the end, the most important part of this is to help alleviate fears. Now, the medication you want to make sure you are the most accurate on is going to be your trigger shot. Again, think of the time that you're supposed to take it within plus or minus 15 minutes. When it comes to Ganarelix and Cetratide, you want that to be plus or minus 30 minutes from the time to that hour window. And when it comes to Golmolaf and Falstim and Menopur, you can be off within hours and nothing's going to go wrong. But more important, as we mentioned from beginning, it's almost impossible to mess things up because over a period of 10 days, you are taking thousands of units of medications. Missing one small portion is not going to cause a major issue when it comes to Golmolaf and Falstim and Menopur. The other meds are different, and we talked about that. But for these meds, you don't have to make sure at 8 o'clock you take the med. You can take it at 8.15 or 8.30 and everything will be fine. At our clinic, we have people make mistakes too. And we could easily say, well, it was their fault. They messed up. And it's true. They did mess up. But whenever that happens, I actually look to ourselves and say, 
we messed up. Because it was our job to teach them it well. It was our job to explain things. And so the most important thing when going through IVF is make sure you understand everything. And if you don't, use the resources to help and ask your nurses and doctors. In the end, remember, it's very difficult to mess this up. So take a deep breath and know you're doing great. If you enjoyed this podcast, please let us know. Let us know any topics that you think would be good for us to do. One of the best ways to let us know that you like this podcast is to review us at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to this podcast. That helps other people know about the podcast and helps spread the word. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I look forward to talking to you again next week on Talk About Fertility Tuesday. Fertility Tuesday.